thank you very much. This is real my pleasure to to have an opportunity to present you a uh, um, uh, um, history of uh, um, modernity uh, of the first half of the century. I would like to present Bauhaus idea or Bauhaus school uh, on a brighter background. Um, uh, I would like to mention um, Bergbund, uh, RFG organization, and also uh, the Breslau Academy of Arts and Crafts. But first, I would like to switch off, and I don't know how to do this, switch off to my, my camera. Oh, okay, that's it. And again, the presentation. Okay, it will be better and easier for me. Uh, and the quality of internet connection probably will be safer and better without the camera on. Okay, <clears throat> my thesis, which I always try to present, is as, uh, is as, <clears throat> as follows. Uh, everything was already in the past. So everything that uh, is happening today in architecture and urban planning is, an, is a <clears throat> an consequence of the revolution that took place uh, mainly in the interwar period. Certainly, it is the Germans who deserves the palm of um, precedence when it comes to guiding the way towards modernity. Today, I would like to prove it briefly and show um, how much inspiration we can draw from the recent past. Uh, <clears throat> okay. This, <clears throat> this is <clears throat> Hans Pelsig. But uh, first I'd like to, to add that changes in Europe happens thanks to the modern method of training. Uh, of education. We all know Bauhaus School, founded by um, Walter Gropius in Weimar, then with the main building and main seat in Dessau, designed by Gropius himself. However, it seems to me that the, um, the Breslau Academy of Arts and Crafts is uh, less known, but it, it played an extremely important role in introducing modernity mostly in Germany, but not only. Um, and yet this school is today called Bauhaus, before Bauhaus. Um, maybe first let's see why. Um, in Breslau, the art schools um, of, of the city played a great role in presenting the young generation uh, of designers who would be able to cope with the problems posed in the late 20s, in the time of a huge housing crisis. Especially, it was the State Academy of Arts and Crafts, earlier the Royal Academy, which after 100 year, years of its existence, introduced the reform of education. The Royal School of Arts and Crafts began its golden age after it was taken over by, by Hans Pelzig, the famous and fantastic uh, uh, German architect. Uh, he initiated the reform continued by successive directors, August Endel and Oskar Moll, until the school was closed in 1932, like Bauhaus as well. Um, Pelzig, after being admitted to the Royal School, um, it was in 1899 uh, by its then director, Hermann Kuhn, introduced designing without preparation. Students had to solve a given topic within a few hours. He required complete independence and was against an imitation. Uh, Pelsig was a supporter of the comprehensive work of art, um, simply Gesamtkunstwerk, the result of collaboration between artists from various fields of art 
for whom architecture was the mother of the whole. Uh, Peltic's intention was to uh, create school workshops representing ver various types of crafts. Initially, there were carpentry, stonework, metallurgy, and weaving workshops. Um, work in the workshops was to combine artistic education with craft practice. At the turn of the 20th century, teaching methods of the Royal School in Breslau were introduced later in the Bauhaus School in Weimar and Dessau. Uh, after more than 15 years, Gropius wanted to have six months of preliminary course introducing knowledge about forms, material, and colors, and also drawing and special composing. After completing the course, students went to practice in, in workshops for three years, including metal processing, wood, wall painting, ceramics, special composition, and sculpture. Uh, uh, in 1916, Hans Peltzig left Breslau and took up the position of city architect in Dresden. At that time, the candidate for the position of the school's headmaster, uh, Breslau School, uh, was being considered. The following people were taken into account. August Endel, Heinrich Tessenow, Friedrich Lars, Bruno Taut, this famous Bruno Taut, and Walter Gropius. Um, if he had not been able to obtain permission to establish a modern school in Weimar, we would have been perhaps a director of Breslau Academy. We would have the Bauhaus in Breslau, although the, uh, the Peltic School, the, the Breslau Academy was co is called Bauhaus before Bauhaus. The similarity is a very, between these two schools uh, is very clear. Uh, <clears throat> This is the contemporary view of the school after the renovation, you know it very well. And this is the concept of education uh, introduced by Bauhaus. Um, I would like to, um, to, to uh, a bit later to take a look at, uh, at this feature of the architecture, which is color. Um, let's come back to Breslau. Um, uh, in Breslau, even before the First World War, the use of new materials um, appeared and the modernity appeared uh, very early, um, between 1905 and 1913, um, several buildings were uh, designs that played an important role in the history of European architecture. You see the market hall designed by Richard Friedemann and hein Heinrich Küster. Uh, <clears throat> the market hall um, were among the first in Europe to use the reinforced concrete structure of the parabolic arches with a span of 19 meters. Mm. The architects um, decided to, um, to leave the, the material in almost inside, in almost pure form, not hiding the texture uh, under a layer of plaster. Um, but uh, while the facade uh, of the whole represented historical architecture, um, it was. Um, beginning of the very um, interesting uh, usage of concrete new material which appeared in, in 19th century. Um, the next uh, building I would like to show you is the Pelzig, Hans Pelzig office building. building. Uh, Pelzig first used concrete as a building material both for the construction and interior design. So we can see the rough structure, the rough surface um, of concrete um, on the elevation. And we can see the 
um, the construction, the new con the, the skeleton construction from outside as well, underlined with the horizontal lines of windows. It is uh, the introduction maybe of the famous part rule formulate for rules of Le Corbusier, uh, rules of architecture formulated by Le Corbusier a bit later. Um, and uh, the um, Breslau Academy um, presented the professor and students work uh, on the um, numerous exhibition, but you can see some here. But in <clears throat> in Breslau, uh, it was decided even before the First World War to create an, an, an exhibition grounds uh, with a main building, uh, which was Centennial Hall, which is here, and Fordham Pavilion by uh, this by city architect Max Berg. This was designed by Hans Pelzi as well as uh, the pergola as well. Um, <clears throat> the history of 20th century architecture advanced in so many dramatic events, surprising works, uh, original um, artists and controversial ideas uh, that getting to know this phenomena because becomes a and getting to know this phenomena becomes a fascinating adventure. And certainly one of such surprising original and controversial projects is the Centennial Hall designed by Berg. Um, this is a unique ex example of innovative use of reinforced concrete. Never before has it been decided to show the texture of raw concrete with traces of wooden formwork and combine it with a sophisticated color decoration, stained glass, sculptures, and paintings. Although the project has not been fully implemented, the novelty of the idea should be appreciated. Let's take a look at the building from the, and the inside, the interior of the building and the fantastic uh, construction. And um, this is the, the sketch, the drawing um, made by famous Viennese painter Orka, Oska Kokoschka. The Berg wanted to um, invite him to design a painting decoration of the Centennial Hall interior. It was never done, but the idea is precious. And we have to remember uh, um, the whole concept of the architect. Um, if the, um, the work had been done by Kokoschka, it would have been painting and stained glass in an expressionist style, probably. Um, the stained glass would probably have replaced the window window panes and the dome of, um, and <clears throat> in the dome the polychrome would have decorated the um the pendant types of the great arches and the ceilings of the individual step uh, steps of the dome uh, strate stratigraphic examinations um, of the paintings um, and the archive searches reveal a new face of this building. Uh, according, you see the Berg sketches uh, showing that he planned something here. Sculptures, paintings. <clears throat> we don't have Kokoschka project, but we have to remember that it was planned. And, um, uh, so uh, finally, um, Centennial Hall uh, was a kind of Gesamtkunstwerk, uh, Gesamtkunstwerk as intended uh, by the author. Um, it is a combination of innovative construction, form, and color palette. 
um, uh, and the uh, stratigraphic examination shows that the, the concrete outside what was, was covered with the um, transparent yellowish color coating um, in, in effect. So it's a pity that the project wasn't done as a whole, but we have to remember what Berg planned. And now it's a probably about time you can see the building before and after the renovation, which was done in 2009. And in the interval period, uh, next uh, excellent buildings uh, was were built in Breslau. It is the department store uh, of the Petersdorf firm designed by Eric Mendelssohn. Um, it is um, another department store, uh, uh, Bergheim, designed by Hermann Dernburg. Um, but, and this is the, the pharmacy in the city center. Look and um, look at the content. Uh, context, how brave the city authorities were. Um, uh, they agreed to have a very modern building, extremely modern building in a very historical context. It's still existing and it's beautiful. Uh, Batogropius wanted to to show his idea designing the um, Turkin housing estate in in Dessau. Um, as you can see introducing not only the uh, new construction system and um, new architectural form but also the new urban plan uh, as well uh, this is the um, uh, the photographs were taken from the so-called Zonderhaft number seven, published by um, uh, by Rice Forschungsgesellschaft für die Schachtigkeit in Bau und Wohnungswesen. Let me um, use the abbreviation RFG. Um, it was a, a very important organization. I have. To, um, to mention it uh, because the um, RFG formulated the um, in 1926 um, the organization was established and um, um, it was founded to develop optimal housing solutions organize and finance relevant research and support the development of modern housing estates. Um, and who was a vice chairman of RFG? Bartel Gropius. And the Turkin estate was um, under was built under the supervision of, of this um, important RFG, RFG organization. Um, I think I'm, 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 now I have to, to mention the, the role of Bergbund. Um, Bergbund was uh, founded in, uh, before the First World War in 19, 1907. Um, the organization consisted, consisted of progressive in, industrialists, artists, artisans, and architects to deal not only with architecture, but also ventured into design of industrial, commercial, and household products. Um, uh, the Vergund played an immensely important role in the emergence of modern architecture. Hermann Utesius, one of the group's founding members and intellectual leaders, insisted um, on more content and less art and defined the Verbund's scope of activity from the design of a sofa pillow to building cities. Um, 
Mutesius also advocated industrialization and standardization in the construction business. Uh, and, um, and in the interim period, under the Bergmund Initiative, uh, six model Bergmund experimental estates were built. They were connected with the um, 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 exhibitions and <clears throat> uh, and um, uh, built under Deutsche Weltbund and its national sections in Switzerland, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. Uh, so we have uh, Stuttgart, Brno, Breslau, Zurich, Vienna, and Prague. Uh, as a place of um, still existing, um, fantastic modern uh, dwelling estates. Um, although uh, Stuttgart um, Weissenhof was partly destroyed during the war, it's still an, <clears throat> an important witness uh, of um, the revolution which happened in the into mostly in the interval period in concerning the architecture um, the experimental estates were to test the functional premises of new architecture and present new designs as well uh, as construction methods for apartment blocks and modest houses that could be built inexpensively on a large scale. The aim was to reduce construction costs while optimizing the effect. Interior design and household organization, furniture and its arrangement were also addressed. Um, although the Weissenhof estate uh, is um, the most important probably as be, because it was the first um, dwelling estate and, and it is very well known. I would like to concentrate on the uh, on the Vova, on the Breslau estate as well um, because this too, this was an, an international effort um, in Brussels, uh, Breslau authorities decided not to invite international um, representative of European avant-garde from other countries because it was written in the um, um, everyday magazines that it was done because of the um, difficulties in Silesia, difficulties connected with the very um, severe um, climate. Uh, but I think it was the financial re reason uh, mostly. What kind um, of tendencies of um, uh, um, <clears throat> you can see the um, publication uh, of um, Reichsforschungsgesellschaft um, plan of plans of uh, dwellings uh, uh, kitchen, uh, which is a very important part of um, uh, of the uh, of the dwelling. We, we we all remember the Frankfurt, the famous Frankfurt kitchen designed by Margarete Schitelli in 1926. In every uh, dwelling of uh, model of the state, such a kitchen were intro was introduced. Um, examples of model layout of, uh, for instance, um, detached houses and uh, dwellings in block of flats and multifamily houses. So it was um, easier for architects to um, to use such um, such such solutions and uh, have uh, 
such <clears throat> guide to to design um, the sign um, the, the the new method were um, used methods were used to discover the optimal uh, features of future modern houses they started from kitchen as you can see and then the other parts of uh, houses were taken into account. So um, what kind of um, tendencies um, in domestic and housing architecture uh, in Europe were presented during Werkbund exhibitions? Um, let's take a closer look. Um, uh, the modern and new construction. Uh, the, structu the structural solution worked out by engineers and architects were meant first of all to facilitate the production of industrialized living units. Um, the introduction of um, skeleton constructions to dwelling architecture was a truly revol revolutionary change. The first usage was in um, uh, Stuttgart, it was Miss van der Rohe who introduced it in steel skeleton construction in his um, block of flats. Uh, the, um, the, the frame, the construction relieved the external walls from the former load bearing function and allowed for a modern flexible approach to elevation design in uh, uninhibited by structural requirements. Um, it is in the 20s that large expanses of blazing appeared in the form of horizontal strips of windows um, uh, set against plane elevation. Uh, I've mentioned it a bit before. This is the the advertisement um, of the first um, Bergbund estate, um, dwelling estate, and we, you can see the historical traditional interior of the house. And this is the, uh, the protest against uh, such a tradition, and it, it was introducing the modernity which you can easily see on the right side of this uh, um, drawing. So as I said, the interior arrangement of, of the subject of the study of the more modern movement architects as well. So um, new interior design um, by avant-garde architects uh, featured empty, uncluttered rooms strictly uh, functional objects, lightweight machine-made furniture, which would not be up to much space. And um, everything not serving a practical purpose was removed. Um, very often uh, the architects themselves designed all furniture because it was um, sometimes difficult to buy them on the market, although the Tonnet film was a perfect one, producing the, um, the wooden furniture uh, seating, uh, which is used by modern movement um, architects. Uh, and this is, uh, let's take a closer look um, uh, at the uh, all six available estates. This is the Weissenhof. Um, you can see the, old, the modern urban um, uh, solution as well. The modern housing estate had layouts increasingly close um, um, either to the ideal of silent Bauweis, yeah, the linear layout on one hand, and as we can see here, on the, on, the, on the other, architects presented house um, 
separately suited in the landscape in accordance with Le Corbusier principle to urban planning, uh, deprived of air, sand, and uh, greenery. So he pretended that the, the, the urban planning deprived uh, of air, sand, and greenery is weak. Um, such modern houses were presented in 1927. Uh, and as I've mentioned, the, um, all architects uh, wanted to uh, follow the RFG guidelines. The Weissenhof Siedlung was um, built under the RFG supervision. So the, um, the guidelines defining the optimal standard size of the apartment in relation to size of the family. And um, uh, RFG, uh, um, um, RFG uh, proposed uh, 45 uh, square meters for the smallest flats. Uh, 57 for medium size and 70 for the largest. Uh, you can see the modernity. And then the next one was uh, the Bruno, very small um, complex of only um, detached, semi detached houses, one family houses, detached, semi detached, and row uh, on terraced buildings. It is the proposal of so-called Le Corbusier modernity. And finally, uh, 19, in 19, Bruno was in 1928, and one year later, the um, Vova, uh, it means Wohnung und Bergam exhibition, Ausstellung, that's why abbreviation Vova was created, was organized on the exhibition grounds and in the, with the main buildings, Centennial Hall as the main buildings of the, the complex and the model estate was built in the, in the vicinity. Uh, the original Fontaine. So everything which was connected with um, building industry and interior arrangement, construction, materials was presented during the exhibition. And even the very examples of uh, interior arrangement uh, in all in the Centennial Hall, in the exhibition, and in the uh, um, dwelling estate as well. Uh, the modern houses were furnished and um, ran for two, and a, two years to check the ideas of architects. Uh, but unfortunately, um, we have to say that they failed because the houses were criticized a lot and they were too expensive for ordinary people. So um, in a short time, the Kinster, so-called Kinster filter the, uh, was uh, created. The dwellers were architects themselves, artists and people connected with the uh, um, uh, university level, uh, accepting the modernity easier than ordinary people. I, I would like to, um, to concentrate for, for a while on the form presented. We saw the Le Corbusier example, as that's called Le Corbusier example of, um, um, of modernity, but we have also um, another path to um, introduce by Hugo Herring and Hans Sharon, um, um, German architects. Um, Hugo Herring's organic architecture, the organ Haftes Bauen, provided an, an alternative to the international style uh, promoted by Le Corbusier or Walter Gropius or Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. The British uh, historian Peter Blundell Jones called 
whole school of hearing the lost key to um, comprehending, to understanding the the twenties. Um, hearing was guided by the organic order of nature, um, the contradiction of which, um, in his opinion, was the geometric geometric form. Um, his design method was based on shaping the house from the inside to the outside for inner for inner housing, taking into account the functional requirements of individual rooms. According to him, the most important thing was to work on the plan that should optimally reflect needs the needs of the future user. And um, finally, we have the fantastic example of uh, Sharon House designed for Vuva housing estate. Uh, it was um, originally house for singles and um, childless couples. Uh, it comprises uh, it comprised um, split level apartments uh, for singles uh, of a 20, 20 square meters each uh, and for couples uh, of 37 square meters each. It seems very tiny, but um, as you enter the room, um, you don't have that um, uh, impression that it's a so that, that the area of the such a split level uh, um, apartment is um, so um, small. Um, And this is the right wing with balconies for childless couples. Um, so we have a finally organic building. Um, organic buildings uh, featured sophisticated shapes, soft contours, and large windows connecting the inside with the outside. Uh, the houses architectural form was uh, but an outer shell to encapsulate and shelter the process of living going on inside. It, it was an explanation of uh, architects who created Selton, who was a very poor as far as such way of creating architectural form is concerned. Um, okay, let's take a look at other houses and the um, shape of the form and plants. There are um, a few more in the Vova estate, which we can call organic architecture. This is the detached house by Heinrich Lauterbach. This is the house by Moritz Hagda and also by Ludwig Mosshammer as well. So all together we can see on these photographs and even such house were presented. It was designed by Professor Gustav Wolf, um, a representative of the, um, one of the elders among architects. Uh, and he uh, proposed a very uh, traditional form of house um, as well. And the people visiting an um, exhibition um, uh, like it very, very much. And the interior arrangement and Frankfurt kitchen uh, in some houses as well. And the empty space in a tiny rooms. Um, modern equipment, modern furnishings. That's what was presented to um, one of the most important aim of this Vermut Estates um, was to teach people, was the, um, the education, how to live in such 
modern, uh, different from traditional houses and flats. And finally, we uh, we are in Zurich. This is the Neubel estate. Um, and in Vienna, the Lines estate. Uh, and finally, um, we can see the, the, the original view of the fragment of the, the estate and the um, terraced building. Uh, designed by each one, two or three sections were designed by different architects. And finally, Prague. Prague was, in my opinion, not as important as the other uh, was aware because the, the, the Prague proposal was uh, only a detached house, the luxury house. Uh, so it was not a solution to resolve the huge uh, housing problem, which appeared in, um, in Germany and in Europe after the First World War. And finally, I wanted to, um, to mention um, the very important and interesting feature of architecture. It is color. It is color scheme. Um, the, the two color trends can be distinguished in German avant-garde architecture of the interval period. The first um, is the trend of colorful solution for both the facade and the interior, promoting the bold use of color. The second, we can see it on the screen. The second usually associated with this period um, is the trend of white architecture. It is connected with the last part of the 20s. This is the Sharon concept. The colorful um, architecture, the the, the farbige Stadt trend was introduced certainly by Bruno Taut, who was a pioneer of the color movement uh, in Germany. His love of color was already evident in the early garden estates before the First World War. In Magdeburg and in Berlin, it was a fantastic Falkenberg dwelling estate. Um, from 1913, together with Paul Scherbach, he developed the idea of a synthesis of architecture and plastic or um, um, fine arts already mentioned, Gesamtkunstwerk, putting color on a par with the shape of the building. So let's take a look at the drawings, which are results of the um, stratigraphic examination. This is um, the, the Sharon building again um, of the Vuva estate. And the result of the uh, stratigraphic examination we have. So we finally discovered the uh, the color scheme, the concept of, uh, of an artifact. Very interesting one. Um, and at, at the background, there were um, important uh, activity of city authorities in Berlin and in Frankfurt and mine as well. You can see the, the uh, part of the um, Siedlung. This is the. Um, these are drawings reconstructing the color scheme of the building by by, by Winfried Brenner. The architect specialized in um, revaluation of modern movement uh, architecture. This is the um, um, watercolor presenting the Frankfurt uh, Renerstadt estate. This is the. In Zelle, uh, Otto Hessler, Italian Garden. How colorful uh, landscape some architects wanted to create um, shows the, this picture, these photographs presenting the um, Brunner Taut uh, houses in Berlin. Uh, and 
to conclude, I have to say that Bauhaus was not the only place where modern movement appeared. Bauhaus masterwork, probably inspired by Ariel Weltmund and Breslau Academy activity, uh, but the how Bauhaus, but the that work that. Uh, uh, but the Bauhaus ideas, which were spread all over the world, uh, inspired many architects till today. The Bauhaus certainly is the most famous school and most famous brand in architecture means modernity introduced by, by school teachers. Vata Gropius wrote, uh, being a, a director of the school, if we fail to bring about a socially oriented form for everyday life within our industrialized society, and at the same time to shape our environment, environment uh, more beautifully and more uniformly, it will be difficult for us to be sympathetic to the achievements of the 20th century. These words of uh, Walter Gropius, a visionary architect of the 20th century, became a motto creating the way to modernity for many of his European colleagues. Um, he created a school whose fame has not faded to this day. The work of students and professor of school is considered to be the beginning of modern industrial forms. So I think that um, we still can find a lot of interesting uh, features of architecture which can inspire us even today. Uh, and to conclude, I um, I have to say I wish you successes in your future work uh, of the um, uh, of the twenty first century or in the twenty first century. It was uh, I mean young generation. It was your time. It, it is your time uh, now. But um, I don't know if. Uh, I failed, but I wanted to, maybe I failed, I don't know, but I wanted to um, uh, to prove that everything was already in the past. Uh, and changes happened in such a short time that uh, we can call it easily call it revolution in architecture and this revolution happened in Germany and ad I admire it uh, non-stop. So this is it, that, that's what I prepared for you today. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for this uh, great introduction to our workshop. And I hope there will be there will be uh, a lot of questions from our audience. So please, if there are some questions, uh, please state them uh, on the chat, or maybe you can just ask them personally. Uh, just by turning on the the microphone, so 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 we are here to 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 answer, and there is going to be a um, uh, discussion uh, on the um, on the lecture. So uh, yes, I hope there will be some some questions, and maybe before the questions appear, I would like maybe to share my kind of. Uh, I don't know whether it's a question or, or, or rather my, my, my thought or, or concern. Uh, and um, to what extent such a revolution actually is needed today, but also whether it is possible. And um, I think that if we are talking about the situation from 100 years ago, 
then the, the world uh, was less democratic in a way, and maybe perhaps it was easier for influential people, for influential artists and architects uh, to implement and impose in a, in a top-down way the uh, ideas, innovative ideas on a, on a large scale. And today we are in the age of participation of uh, multiple views and ideas and, and very different values. And uh, perhaps we are more likely to trust bottom-up initiatives resulting from local needs. And therefore, I wonder if such a revolution in art, technology, architecture is today, maybe on one hand, it is more difficult because of this fragmentation of ideas and needs, but on the other hand, maybe it is easier thanks to modern technologies and globalization, and actually the speed with which the, the, the ideas spread around the world. So, so this is like the, the first thought that came to my mind after this, this lecture. And I, I want to share with this, so, so maybe this is also like the basis for the, for the discussion. I don't know, Professor Urbanik, whether you are able to answer my to, to this my concern or not. I may, or maybe there are some people who want to add something, or maybe not. Maybe your opinion is it's quite different. But I'm thinking of comparing those situations from a hundred years ago and and today. Um, I have to add something, which I think is important that. We have to remember that we are talking about the, the beginnings of modernity and the avant-garde trend in architecture. Avant-garde is always in minority. Uh, and, and there was not a lot of, um, although it's very uh, impressive and in all publications concerning 20th century authors, describe uh, um, describe the, the, this interesting trend but we have to remember that um, in the all city landscape uh, traditional uh, architecture um, was built uh, and as far as dwelling uh, um, as far as the um, well, in the state or the states are concerned, the very functional proposal uh, was um, garden city, Gartenstadt. And the Gartenstadt Bewegung was uh, in Germany also very important. And I like it very much as well. Uh, so, um, uh, in fact, and we, we, we have to, if we have to judge the this activity, we have to say that the architects fail very often. Like Le Corbusier with the Pesac uh, um, estate in, in Bordeaux, they fail because people, ordinary people for whom they designed houses, um, uh, did not accept them. In fact, uh, in Breslau, there was a house fry in the Rhine. The, um, uh, the women uh, who visited um, the Weissenhof estate and they formulated um, 17 uh, uh, stipulates uh, points against modern architecture and uh, Breslau architects promised to take it into account, but they criticized houses, uh, Breslau houses of the Dubai state as well, et cetera, et cetera. So it was, um, it was the beginning. Uh, and we, we now, we, we have, we are in a different place of, of history. So um, uh, being an, inspired by these beginnings, remember that it was a different time of history. 
uh, th that's what I would like to add. Yes, thank you. Of course, it is like that, that, that uh, it is completely different um, time of in, in, in history. Uh, but personally, I can see still like many similarities between the problems of the world, like from 100 years ago and problems of, of today. And uh, we can see that modernists, they, they, they looked for a kind of a compromise between the quality of materials, the quality of art and architecture and uh, economic accessibility and availability and social values. Uh, and it led to, to this economical housing and this small but, but very comfortable apartments, uh, which was kind of a dream for, for, for that time. And I think that today, while we are facing the climate crisis and the refugee crisis and the, our cities are overcry overcrowded, then today we also have to think about about like small flat, flats and compact cities and this minimum existence idea I, I think is, is, is still valid and so the question would be how we can still think of, of Bauhaus and Werkbund ideas uh, today uh, which are supported by, by, by contemporary technologies and possibilities that we have thanks to, to the digital world and, and thanks to globalization. Yes, I agree. The, we, we still need the socially oriented dwelling architecture and this existence minimum type is still um, needed. Uh, by future inhabitants, I think. Thanks, Mangosh, also for this comment, because this is exactly more or less what we would like to be discussing the whole week. Exactly the ideas of Bauhaus, of this avant-garde movement that was the minority. I like the fact that you reminded us of this and um, the situation nowadays. How do we respond? And can we still talk about avant-garde and still minorities trying to change the world or there is a more, more um, there is a kind of a mass movement trying to uh, find a way to change the world in a good way. I can see, should I continue my question with the uh, moderation? Because there's Günther and Bartosz and Günther was first, I think you can have the word. Yeah, yeah, I, so, 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 yes, uh, uh, Günther, yeah, you, you, he was the first. Okay, I didn't notice first, so, so, so please, Günther. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for this um, uh, beautiful lecture and also with this aspect of color at the end. Um, but my question is a bit uh, going to a different um, direction. Um, and it's going into the direction of, or the question of uh, the political nature um, uh, and, uh, or the, the political environment uh, and architecture. Uh, when we look at uh, the Bauhaus, when it was founded um, and uh, when it developed, actually it kind of like officially kind of was shut down um, uh, due to political reasons um, before the, the the, the buildings were built basically. So kind of like in 1925, around 1925, they were even forced to kind of like move to, uh, to Dessau and then and, and to shut down. And they even proposed to kind of destroy the, the buildings uh, of, of the Bauhaus at that time. So they, they wanted to completely erase um, by political power uh, this movement. And, um, and then the buildings were kind of a bit later until like 20, um, 1925 to 30 or a bit later even. And um, today, when we look at, uh, at the new ba European Bauhaus initiative, it's a bit like almost the upside down version uh, because uh, the political will was first. Um, do you have uh, any comments on that, uh, Professor Yadvier? 
I have to agree with you. Yes, the political background was for for um, in interocular was very important. They needed the green, green light to to introduce the, the new concepts. And as as we know, um, it uh, um, uh, wasn't possible in every city in in, in Germany. That is why in Berlin and Frankfurt and mine. Uh, where the social democratic authorities uh, were, it was possible to to build uh, such um, gross Siedlungen, uh, great uh, dwelling estates. But uh, but the, the, well, not everywhere that we know um, that. And today is a completely different situation. I agree. I agree that there is a green light that we are waiting for the proper architect from the political, um, as far as the, 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 the politics is concerned, about the, this is the task for architects now to, to prepare the, the proper proposal proper, available, uh, affordable houses. Um, uh, we still need it. So probably um, nothing changed. Maybe it's a, it is a, a, an exaggeration, I, I realize that. Um, but it should be easier now to, to create good houses, but uh, life shows us that it's not that uh, yeah, it's not that good. Um, uh, we have um, such experience in Wrocław. Uh, the uh, architects here being inspired uh, by the Vuba estate uh, created a. Um, um, they call it Vova 2, Vova number 2. It is a um, Zerniki um, district. This is the name of the, 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 the district of the city. And they created uh, the new, modern, experimental complex of dwelling houses. But in fact, it's not the same. The circumstances, the situation is not the same. The, the, the Boba people were extremely brave. They uh, wanted to introduce completely new way of living in new modern houses. But now we are more and uh, much more educated and we know modernity, we accept them, we accept it and um, uh, there is a different situation today, but I agree the political uh, um, uh, agreement or is um, uh, is very much needed. May I, may I maybe add one one aspect um, because it 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 seems that it should be easier now since the political will is there even on European level. On the other hand, uh, sometimes this makes me a bit kind of like it, it feels a bit suspicious um, because uh, there is this kind of quote saying, OK, um, research follows money. Um, and um, it means also just uh, recently I've seen a proposal which comes from uh, from the politics um, saying what should be done, like this kind of what kind of modularity and how it should be understood and how it should be kind of like um put into real like into action and uh, this is kind of like what what i found find a bit questionable um if the political situation is kind of like not only given the green light but only proposing what exactly has or should be done do you have any comments on that uh... You mean to suggest what should be done? Should uh, 
as far as the architecture is concerned. Um, I don't think so. This is the, the architect's task that the, the political decision uh, should concern uh, financial uh, support, um, the, without uh, financial support, uh, there is uh, nothing to do, uh, in fact, uh, with uh, such modern existence minimum uh, class still needed, I think. Um, Maybe there are two okay. other raised hands. Maybe yes, yeah, I, 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 yes, I was waiting. Maybe that, that there's something more that Kinte would like to add, or or, or Professor no. Rubanik. So, okay. so, so maybe continuing. Yes, my, mm -hmm. So maybe continuing the topic of, of of the ideas and maybe also the the, the political and social contexts. Uh, we know from this time of Bauhaus and Werkbund, all these ideas, uh, Luft and Kaller and the, the other uh, other um, good uh, uh, sounding uh, slogans. Now we have this uh, big <laughs> political movement uh, created by European Commission, which is also described by, by this kind of slogan, which sounds beautiful, uh, positioning the, the, the word beautiful at the first place, then sustainable, and then together. And uh, my question uh, goes uh, to this last one, to this together, because we can, uh, we can, rem yeah, I remember still the, the, the picture uh, of the Solvay conference <clears throat> in, 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 from 20s, when we had all these uh, heroes of, of, of science, uh, Albert Einstein, Schrodinger, uh, uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie, and, 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 and many others sitting together on the conference. We have this beautiful picture of, uh, of, uh, of, of the heroes of Bauhaus, uh, when they are standing together, all these big names. Uh, and, and, and my question is about the spirit of collectiveness, uh, among the uh, scientists, uh, among the architects, artists, uh, this thing which was postulated by, by Verbund. And the question is whether today we have a chance to create this kind of, of collective uh, spirit. The, this is maybe not a, 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 this question about your opinion, what, what, what times uh, we are living now, whether this kind of the collective spirit of architects is, is, is uh, possible, or we are, or maybe we are living in a time uh, what, what Mogosha was, was, was mentioning at the, be at the beginning, uh, of, of time of, of, of uh, 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 down to top uh, movement and then there is no space for such a strong um, uh, pictures uh, like like all these heroes together in which the pictures are manifestos itself uh, if, if you expect me to answer your question um, and I, um, I don't think I, uh, I'm able to. Uh, I have to say, I don't know. We should to work together, uh, but it is your task. It is the task of young generation of architects. Uh, the uh, 21st century, it is the time of uh, cooperation. It is the time of Interdiscipl interdisciplinary researches uh, and it should concern architecture. Uh, architecture um, is created by architects, constructor, acoustics, um, material, building material specialists, etc. They should cooperate all together and they, they, they do. They, um, they did and they do. In, in fact, and maybe such an idea as this one is a, a, a is a good proposal to to realize how um, uh, how important is uh, the cooperation between um, people from different kind countries representing different opinion of of architecture and dwellings. 
create a new museum now. Um, um, uh, present your proposals concerning modernity in the 21st century. It's it's your turn now. Uh, it's it, it's a task for young people. Thank you for this answer. So so at this moment, I I would yeah, give the floor good. then yes. <laughs> to the young generation because I see one of the students Eva who wants to also set the question and she's the representing the young generation. So Eva, please. Uh, thank you for this uh, kind introduction. Um, I would like to actually add to this um, to this topic that. Um, I feel like the, the aspect of togetherness um, in the new European Bauhaus could have three possible meanings, uh, two of which could um, come from the original Bauhaus movement, uh, such as the gathering all of the experts and architects, architects together, uh, coming up with um, new ideas um, from the, the top, uh, let's say. And the together could, could also mean and the, the focus on uh, interdisciplinarity uh, of uh, coming together with people from um, from other other disciplines uh, such as to, to improve the craftsmanship as a whole um, but in my opinion um, the down to top initiatives could also mean the togetherness on a smaller scale and the, the possibility of um, participation uh, of the local communities uh, could actually be uh, something to, to actually tackle one of the issues, one of the problems uh, that uh, the original Bauhaus movement was mostly criticized for, uh, which is the globalization of the, the movement of the buildings um, in a way that it's sometimes different to, to tell apart whether uh, an urban composition is from uh, Austria, Breslau or um, Berlin. So uh, I feel like something like a, a path that we could go to and towards uh, would be working together as architects and uh, working with other people uh, to come up with um, these broad ideas that could be adjustable by the participation of the local community. Yes, I agree to create the neighborhood units, the, the neighbor, according to the uh, Clarence Perry, uh, it, it was. This is the, the, the next argument um, concerning my thesis that everything was already in the past. The neighborhood units, it, it means the same. So, uh, but the cooperation um, um, of architects the architect's cooperation with the society, with the group of people for whom they uh, wanted to design is extremely important. Uh, and I agree with you. This is needed. This is probably the key of success in the future. Um, 